Hey, it's me, Jake. And in this video, we're gonna do some serious songwriting, riff building, and music making with a strict focus on the Dorian mode. Dorian is a really versatile and interesting tonality. It can pop up in a lot of different interesting ways and has a lot of unique characteristics. But unfortunately in this channel, I've really only highlighted the jazzy and bluesy, funky aspects of it. The last time it popped up was in my video, Seven Modes and Seven Musicians, where Amy Nolte played a killer piano lead on top. And if we go way back to my video on Hemiola, I did a Dorian jam there as well, and you can hear it has this smoky salsa jazz club kind of vibe to it. But Dorian's capable of way more than just jazz, blues, and funk. In this video, what I'd like to do is harness the power of Dorian to create some wistful Dorian dad rock. Now, dad rock is a pretty nebulous term. My definition of that would be mainstream rock that's easy to listen to, easy to headbang to, it's not too deep or insightful, and it's certainly not too complicated or difficult. And I like that stuff. You know, there's nothing wrong with liking things that aren't of the highest quality. That's why I still enjoy Taco Bell. So to get started writing riffs in Dorian, I do want to have an idea of what I'm shooting for. What is my goal here? You know, what key am I going to be in? Those kinds of things. To pick a Dorian key, I'd like to think about the fact that anytime you're in a Dorian tonality, you're going to be focusing on a minor chord or a minor seventh chord. So what minor chord do I want to be focusing on as a guitar player? Well, E minor is a good bet. That's an easy chord. A minor as well, and D minor. Those are all chords that are simple to play on my guitar, and I have free uh, fingers that I could do something else with, and they also use open strings, which gives me a little bit more versatility if I wanted to do something like an acoustic riff. And what you're gonna see is we're actually gonna end up writing a riff that's built for the acoustic guitar, and we're gonna spend quite a bit of time writing this riff. But once that's done, it's really gonna open up the doors for writing the rest of the song. So most of this video is gonna be sculpting just this first riff, and then after that, you'll see the other parts of the song are really just gonna melt into place. I ended up choosing the D Dorian key. So that means I'm going to start on a D minor chord. And just in case you're unfamiliar with this Dorian concept, remember I have a video on Dorian, but I also have all this information illustrated on my ultimate modal poster. You can check the description below to find a link to get that. Now that I've got my D minor chord, let's try to come up with the Dorian chord progression. And the heart of Dorian is absolutely that major four chord. When you have a minor tonic like D minor, and then all of a sudden you play a major four chord like G major, well there is really the heart and soul of Dorian. Inside that G major, we have a B natural, and that B natural is the natural sixth in the key of D. So really, if you can basically summarize the Dorian key just with a minor one and a major four. But I'd like to do something a little more interesting than that, so here's what I opted for. I went my tonic chord, my D minor, and then I dropped down to the flat seven, C major, and then I brought in the G major, and then I went straight back to D minor. Just those four chords is what I ended up focusing on. D minor, C major, G major, and D minor. Now that I've got a chord progression, let's think about rhythm so we can make this interesting. In my last video, we were writing in 4-4 four, four time, and I've never really done a lesson on how to write in 6-8, so let's do a little mini lesson on composing in 6-8 time. To get started, I'm just gonna play my D minor chord, and I'm gonna count six eighth notes, but I'm gonna count them like they were quarter notes, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. To get that 6-8 bounce, it's important to accent the 1 and the 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. From there, try adding in some 16th notes, but count them like 8th notes, like this. You'd have 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6, and 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6. And you can do different variations of that. 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, and 3, 4, 5, 6. By dropping some of the downbeats, you'll end up with some syncopation. One, two, and, and four, five, six. One, two, and, and four, five, and six. One, two, and, and four. So really, any combination of those strumming patterns is going to work fine in 6-8, as long as you've got that nice bounce between the two halves of your 6-8 pattern. What I ended up settling on is a very simple 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6, and 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6. And. Also, as a guitar player, it's a good idea to only play the bass notes sometimes, just to kind of get a little bit more of that bounce going. So I've got 1, 2, and 3, and 4, 5, and 6, and 1, 2, and 3, and 4. I could even alternate the bass. There you go. 
and it gets once again you can hear that kind of that storytelling adventurous kind of vibe going six eight time works really good for any time you're trying to kind of keep the story moving i think it works really good for folk music and i think six eight combined with dorian is like a perfect combination if you want to kind of get some tale telling vibes going so now I've got my strumming pattern, I've got my chord progression. Combining the two gives us this, D minor, C major, G major, D minor. And that sounds awesome, but I kind of got sick of all that D minor, so at the very last moment I crammed in a really quick C major like this. One, two, and three, and four, five, six, one, two, and three, and four. And that just helps break up the monotony of not having two measures of D minor all the way through. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. And I love that chord progression. I love the way that sounds. But now it's time to start writing some riffs because we haven't even touched any riffs yet. We've just been talking about chords this whole time. But I have to bring up this fact that if you get chords and if you know chords, then riff writing is going to be a piece of cake because really a lot of the riffs that we love and enjoy are all basically just outlining chord progressions. So, I mean, you can write riffs not thinking about chords at all. I do that kind of thing all the time. But a lot of times, once you look at your riff, you'll realize, oh yeah, the reason this sounds so good is because it's outlining some type of chord progression. So I needed to make a riff that outlined this chord progression. And here's what I did to do that. On the first chord is a D minor, so I play a D note. And when that second measure comes around, it's the chord C. So I wanted to make sure my riff played the note C. When my third measure comes around for G, I wanted to make sure my riff is playing the note G. And you can guess when my fourth measure D comes out, I play the note D. So all I had to do as a riff writer is find a way to bridge those gaps. How do I get from this note to this note to this note? I obviously want to be thinking of the Dorian scale the whole time. So if I'm in 6-8, how do I get from here, D, to here, C? Well, I have a whole measure to get there. So I could do something like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. And then if I wanted to, I could just hang out there. And then I could just go to the G, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, right? So there's a million options I could do. Basically, I mean, I could spend all day coming up with ways to get from these notes. You know, what is my path to get through these notes? Here's what I settled on. It went from D and then it was A, G, F, C. And then I played a quick E and then G and then B, C, D, F, D. And then a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, ornamentation, it turned into this. A, or I'm sorry, D, A, G, F, D, C, E, G, B, C, D, F, D. That is my riff. And what's cool is I can combine that with the chords I had already been writing. Really all I've got to try to do is play those notes and then strum in between. And what I'm left with is this. And that was the riff that I ended up writing. It's an acoustic riff. It's meant to be strummed and played at the same time. And I really, really liked it. To me, the riff was done. However, it's got a little bit of a gap here at the end that I really don't like. I don't like after this. There's nothing going on. And I felt it needed something there. So I just did a throwaway lick, just something to kind of fill up the space. And it's just pentatonic minor. It's a pentatonic minor lick that just goes. And pentatonic minor is great when you're in the Dorian mode, because if you take the second note out of the Dorian mode and the sixth note out of the Dorian mode, well, hey, you got a pentatonic minor scale. So anytime you're in a Dorian tonality, it's heavily advised you try playing around with pentatonic because it's going to fit in there just fine. It's certainly not going to promote that Dorian feel because it doesn't have that sixth in there, but it works great and it gives you that bluesy pentatonic minor feel. So the entire riff now sounds like this. D minor, C. G, D, and then again. And I think that sounds like a million bucks. And I also thought it would serve great as the intro to a song. So here's what I ended up doing, is just recording that exact part on an acoustic guitar. After that, I thought it would be a really easy layer to just double the riff an octave higher on the acoustic guitar. So forget about the strums, just take a listen to that riff and let's play it an octave higher and double it on top and hear what that sounds like. Now I figured that would be the very beginning of the song and let's just do it all over again, but add a little bit of bass guitar, add a little bit of drums and some really, really quiet glockenspiel. I know that's a trendy instrument that keeps popping up these days and I thought it would work really well here. Now 
once that's done, I think it's a pretty obvious choice to go into something like a verse section. And to write that verse section, all we had to do was remove all the riffage. Instead of doing all those hammer runs and pull offs and stuff like that, let's just simplify it and just do the strumming. D minor, C major, G major to D minor. And all I did was add a simple drum beat underneath that. And for the bass line, the bass really just kind of floats around the root notes of each of those chords. Nothing too complicated. However, there's just little moments where it steals from the riff we just wrote. And I kind of like that. I like when instruments kind of borrow from each other or different sections borrow from each other. The, uh, the astute listener might actually recognize, oh, hey, the bass is now doing the guitar part we just heard earlier. But it should be subtle enough where it doesn't stick out and you might not notice it on the first or second listen. <laughs> So now I've got this really cool groove section, it's just begging for some vocals on top. I know in the last video I said I don't want to do singing or vocals because it takes too much time, but I really couldn't resist in this case. I thought I could get away with some James Hetfield style singing on top of this, so I wrote some lyrics and uh, the melody is all in the Dorian scale, it doesn't leave Dorian, um, and the lyrics don't make a lot of sense, they just they just feel good. I like the way the words sounded next to each other, so I just kept it like that. In the cold of the morning, far north of here. The man in the mask moves along. Now that verse section could continue even longer. We could do it two more times, but I decided to change things up. You know, it can be a little monotonous if we keep doing the same chord progression over and over. And right now, all we've heard is that same loop of D minor, C, G, D minor. So one thing I like to do is instead of starting on our tonic, right, we keep starting our progressions on D minor, let's start on something other than our tonic. Don't start on the one chord. And I'm gonna pick that four chord, that big four chord. If we land there, if we start there, it should be like a really refreshing surprise. And if we hang out there longer than we have been before, you know, right now we've been switching chords every measure. So what if we hang out there for two measures? Uh, it should sound pretty different. So here I am in my D minor chord. C major, and this is for our first section, but we want to change things. We're expecting D minor, and that's what we get for the verses. But this time, instead of that C taking me to D minor, we'll have that C take us to the G. You hear how nice and refreshing that is. Back to D minor, we'll do some suspended two, D minor, suspended two, and now G. And I wanted to build things up here, so the chords that I brought in were B flat, and then C, and that would take me to D minor. So what happened there at the end, um, that B flat major chord is actually not in Dorian. I did kind of break the tonality here a little bit. B flat just comes from D minor. I just borrowed it from D minor. That's the sixth chord in D minor. And there's nothing wrong with doing this, you know? I really encourage you to not stick yourself just to one tonality and make yourself, you know, only use the seven notes of major or Lydian, you know? feel free to mix it up. And I think here's a great example. I love the Dorian feel. I loved how everything sounded up until this point. But I also wanted to hear six, seven, one. That's a really common cadence. Your flat six, your flat seven, and your minor one. We hear that kind of thing all the time. And why shouldn't I be able to use it today? Just because I'm in Dorian? Screw that, I want to use it. So I'm going to use it. I came from that D minor to the G. And even though it's going to temporarily put me into a new key, or a an accidental, there's that B flat major, C major, and then back to D minor. Since there's no like harmonies on top of that part, it's going to be pretty easy to accommodate. I'm just going to have my vocals, um, you know, not clash with that chord. If there was any B flats, um, or if there were any Bs that were being played over that, we'd want to switch them to B flats just so they match that chord. Now that obviously builds us up towards something, but what does it build us up to? Well, I decided for like a chorus, but with just no singing. So let's take that riff we wrote at the beginning, the acoustic riff, and let's just electrify it instead by throwing distortion on it and kind of playing it one note at a time. A little bit of vibrato on each note. And we'll also have uh, power chords being playing those same chords in the background while the acoustics are strumming. It should be this really big, epic dad rock chorus. I'm kind of thinking of like Simple Man by Leonard Skinner. Um, just a little heavy. Now, 
this were a real song that I was trying to get produced for the radio, I would end up basically repeating everything. I'd go back to my intro, do another verse, I'd make both verses longer, and then I'd, you know, bring in a bridge section. For this video, what I decided to do is just go straight into a guitar solo. And once again, I didn't really need to write anything new. All I had to do was just keep that groove section going, keep those chords flowing, let's get rid of the riffs again, that way there's space for a guitar solo, and basically just play the Dorian scale on top of that, that section. It's gonna sound like a million bucks. Once the solo is done, I just go back to the intro to close things off. So now let's listen to these sections all together as I proudly present to you my debut Dorian dad rock demo, Willing to Bleed. a dad but that felt like dad rock to me and I really dig it. Before I close out this video though I really want to go into some detail about this whole Dorian versus minor thing. There's a lot of people that would say Jake you're not writing with Dorian you're just writing with minor and you're using a lot of the major sixth and I understand that perspective and I also hate that perspective. I feel like it totally misses out on the idea of a tonality. The idea of saying I'm only going to use these seven notes and when I do that look at all the cool colors that appear look at all the cool imagery and all the cool flavors and tastes that come out of that. You know, when you just use the seven notes of major, we know how that feels. It's very sweet, very bright, um, you know, sprinkly cupcakes and stuff like that. But, you know, this is totally different. The seven notes of Dorian give you this really smoky, western kind of feel, and it's not major. So I, I want to, to me personally, I just think it's really helpful to pretend like a Dorian tonality is its own key. Just like major could be its own key. And then later on, yeah, you can say, okay, I'm really in the key of C major. But to me, it's just stupid to say we were writing in the key of C major today. That's just dumb, because nothing really felt majorish, nothing felt that happy. It's not like we spent a lot of time on the C chord. So I feel like the, the best description of what we did was writing in D Dorian, and then borrowing a little bit from D minor. And other people might say, no, you were actually in D minor the whole time and you borrowed from D Dorian. Whatever, they're very, very similar, they're very close, but so much of this was the seven notes of D Dorian that I think it's fair to say it is in the D Dorian key, even though I know that's not a thing. A music theory professor will fail you for saying the key of D Dorian, but I don't care, I'm not a professor, I think it makes sense. But it can certainly get a little hazy. Are you in minor? Are you in Dorian? Which one are you borrowing from? And sometimes there's not really a, a solid answer, and I'm fine with that. I really don't care. As long as you understand what you're doing and as long as you can convey the information to somebody, I think that's all that matters. But I think a fun little song to take a look at and take a listen to to figure out what key are you really in, and it's really just a good usage of uh, the power between minor and Dorian and that major four chord, that natural sixth, is the song Toss a Coin to Your Witcher. Toss a coin to your witcher, O Valley of Plenty. Oh, really nice little folksy medieval song. It's popular again now. Take a listen to it and see if you can figure out how and why it works and, and where minor shows up versus where Dorian shows up. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy this video, please thank my awesome Patreon supporters for sponsoring these videos. It's the only reason these videos exist. If you'd like to join them, there are links below in the description. But if you can't do that, please just a like, subscribe, or comment all helps me out. 
So thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.